much. We welcome now Marcy Depina, Depina to the show. She is an ethnomusicologist. And Marcy, I'm going to admit, I had to look it up. What is an ethnomusicologist? Well, ethnomusicology is basically the anthropology of music, which is uh, a way in which to look at a culture through its music. So basically, you're looking at what in that culture, what, what is the importance of music? How is music used within that culture? Well, they call music the universal language. So what is it about music that ties people together? Well, I, I agree with you. Music is indeed the universal language. One of the beauties of music is you don't always have to understand the words. It can be in a different language, but as long as you can feel the rhythm, um, you can relate. I. I think, I haven't quite yet proven this, but I, I believe that the fact that we are born to the rhythm of our mother's heartbeat, I believe that that's the reason why music is the universal language. We're born to rhythm, we're created through, you know, gestation period through rhythm, and we come out. So rhythm is, is the one tie that sort of binds us all together. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention, mention to our viewers that you are the past host of a very popular show on Ebru, Ebru TV called Rhythm and Roots, and that talked about among that, th th this topic as well. Indeed, yes, I was the host of Rhythm and Roots for two seasons. Mm -hmm. Wonderful show, and in that show, we, I mean, we covered everything from music from South America to, to Asia to Europe, uh, in all places in between, of course, Africa, the Caribbean. It was really a wonderful experience, and, and through that experience, once again, it was just reinforced to me uh, that music is an in, in a universal language, and that no matter which, which culture, uh, music tends to have the same role in all cultures. So how is it a conduit between political and social movements? How can it bring us together? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, music is, is, is an interesting thing. For one, it's, it's very powerful. Um, I mean, I'm sure everybody's had the experience of hearing a song on the radio that you just cannot stand but you can't get it out of your head. <laughs> I call that an earworm. <laughs> right, exactly. So, I mean, that just points to the power of music. So, um, you know, throughout the course of history, music has been used to inspire people, um, whether it's for political purposes or social purposes. Every uh, country in the history of, of, our, uh, of our, our world has uh, been led to war through the sound of beating drums to the sound of music. Uh, countries around the globe use a national anthem as a way in which to to reinforce a national identity. Um, and this is, you know, something that um, I believe is, is really, really strong. Well, can you tell us a little bit about what's currently happening in the international music scene? Well, you know, there's a lot of interesting things happening right now internationally. Um, you know, music, world music in general has been, uh, you know, strictly, strictly traditional, roots music. Uh, with very traditional purposes. But what's happening now in our globalized world, you know, everybody has access to the internet, everybody is a little bit closer to one another, people are starting to mix things up. So whereas before, uh, you might find somebody, for example, say in Morocco, uh, singing just a traditional style, now you might find that people are mixing it up and, and spicing in jazz and hip hop and R&B and soul music and rock and roll and blending those with traditional sounds. So that's a real trend that we're seeing on the world music scene now. So as a host of rhythm and roots, what commonalities did you see between cultures? Well, I mean, music is, is pretty much always accompanies a lot of the daily tasks of people's lives, um, and it, it definitely accompanies rituals. So uh, in terms of pretty much all cultures, music is something that you find in, you know, religious expression. There's always music. When it comes to celebrations like rites of passage, like birthdays and weddings and even funerals, music always accompanies those things. So music is always used in every culture as a way to either celebrate or to mourn. That's that's something that you find in all cultures. I know sometimes I hear a song and no matter what mood I'm in, it can just lift me up. What's your favorite kind of music? Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's a really difficult question for me to answer because I love music. Um, really, my favorite kind of music is good music. Uh, if, it's, if it's done well, if I can feel it, you if can it feel touches the quality. me. You yes. can feel the quality. That's mm -hmm. my favorite. But I mean, if I had to uh, you know, pick out a genre, I love music, all, all types of music from Africa, from the Caribbean. But you know, the Rhythm and Roots show showed me there, there would be times where I'd say to myself, we, we uh, interviewed a Hungarian group one time, and I thought, what am I going to, you know, I'm not going to like Hungarian music. Right. What do I have in common with right. Hungarian music? And I fell in love with it. It was one of my favorite episodes. So, you know, I really think for me it's about the music being good. I think it's very interesting. You can have a conversation with a person, and you look at them, and you think, 
you know, I had no idea you would like reggae or what, what kind of music. And, and then you find that there's a tie. Mm -hmm. There's a tie. It's true. There's a tie. And, and it starts, you know, at a very young age, mothers singing to their, to their babies. Mm -hmm. So I thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us and to also educating me on what an ethnomusicologist <laughs> is. Well, thank you very much. All right. Pleasure well, to be here. Good to have you. Good to have you.